Okay, so I've gotten a few requests to show what it's like to actually write a deposition or what it's actually like to write um, on the Sano keyboard. And I didn't think I would ever do this because it sounds boring to me and also because my work is confidential so I can't really show an actual case that I'm working on. Um, but what I thought of was I would just Google a deposition that is you know publicly available and then just write to that. So that is what I've done. Okay, so what I did is just search car accident deposition on YouTube. Um, because I feel like that's probably the most common type of case that exists, but especially for a beginner reporter, that's probably the most common case that you would get. At least that is true for me. So uh, there's not a lot available on YouTube. A lot of these are like resources for attorneys, how to question witnesses and stuff, but there are a few that are actual um, recorded depositions. Um, this is the one that I went with this deposition of accident eyewitness and dump truck accident case. Okay, so I'm just gonna fast forward to um, some point past the beginning because I don't wanna write admonitions when I'm not working, um, which if you don't know, admonitions are the beginning and part of every deposition where the attorney instructs the witness about what the deposition is, um, you know, to have verbal answers, to wait until he finishes his question before providing an answer, if he needs a break at any time blah 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 but usually they're very fast and sometimes they're not very clear and I just um, don't feel like doing that so I'm just gonna pick a point somewhere into the meat of the deposition and yeah get started anyone else with you in the vehicle at the time that you drove no just the two of you yes how did you pass the time on the drive what did you talk about current events, you know, just family, politics, just, just different things. Listen to music. What did you observe about Mr. Mr. Lance driving while you were with him on that April 8th? Very cautious driver. Okay. Drives with a very defensive driver. What speed limit were you trying to maintain when you were driving? The speed limit, whatever the posted speed limit was. Okay. How often would you say you drove as opposed to Mr. Glad? We would change, up, I'd say, to about the same equal time. Okay. So if you had left about 8.30 in the morning and you believe you pulled in to Virginia late at night or late in the evening on the 8th you were driving for approximately 12 to 14 hours is that fair well we were we changed through that duration of that time sure i understand that you drove some and mr glad yeah. drove some but the total driving time in the vehicle was about 12 to 14 hours um uh, it doesn't calculate that long Okay, if you left at 8.30, what time do you think you arrived at wherever you stopped in Virginia? Well, it's a math question, so I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, I'm just asking you what time you think you arrived. It was, it was at night, it was p.m., but we stopped at dinner, so 12 hours was not the total time driving understand and the total length of the trip that day is more what I was trying to get at yeah. and that was approximately how long ten hours I would think just all top of my head where did you stop for dinner that night well, it was a cracker barrel that's what I remember there's more than one yeah, there's I don't know where, though. I don't know where we stopped. Okay. All right. Anything eventful occurred during the trip on the April 8th, 2013? No. You remember the weather? It's clear. Clear weather. Temperature? Pleasant. Air conditioning on, heat on? Air rich? conditioning on, radio on. So you went, uh, spent the night in a motel in somewhere in Virginia, north of Richmond, possibly yes. south of Fredericksburg. Um, what happened the next morning? Then we, of course, uh, we got up around 8, same, about the same time, 8 o'clock. 
and we were on the road again. Right. And tell me the route that you took from wherever you were till the point of the accident. We were on 301. Do you know how you got onto Route 301 from 95? It was the exit, the nearest exit, whatever the, the the map, whatever we had on our map was the, I don't remember, just was, we, we exited to 301. I mean, it was off of 95, but I'm pretty sure it was in Virginia. Right. Okay, so now that I'm done writing, what I would do is come back to my transcript on my computer and go through and edit. Um, so anything that didn't translate correctly, um, which you'll see there's some raw steno like right here. Um, I would just go through and define those things. So I'm just going to show you a couple things that is maybe interesting. I don't really know. It's hard also to know what is not common sense because to me it's just second nature. So if you have any questions, definitely leave them down below and I will do my best to answer them. Okay, so the first thing I'll show you is something that is extremely common, which is names. So I'm pretty sure they were saying Mr. Glad um, throughout the deposition, but let's just say his name was Mr. Gladiator. And I just had used a short form during the deposition so that I could write it faster. Um, and I wrote Mr. Glad instead. So what I can do is highlight Mr. Glad and then I can J define it, which means it's going to define Mr. Glad throughout this entire um, file as Mr. Well, I can put whatever I want. So let's just say his name was Mr. Gladiator. Gladiator. Um, and then I always like to do spaces. Um, this is a sticky space, so it's going to keep the Mr. and the Gladiator together so it doesn't break it between two lines, um, which is just a readability thing. Anyway, so if we do that and I select the entire file and then click OK, you'll see right here that it changed to Mr. Gladiator. But then if we scroll down, you'll see every time I wrote Mr. Glad, it's going to show as Mr. Gladiator instead. So another thing that I will want to fix in a transcript, obviously, is these raw steno moments. Um, I really struggle with this one in the moment. I was trying to remember my short form for equal. But the fact that I thought of this as being equal, I'm just going to go ahead and put that in my dictionary as equal so that every time I type that in every single job that I do, that short form will show up as equal. Now. Just to explain the difference, with Mr. Gladiator, that is only going to be in this specific transcript. If I type Mr. Glad in a separate job, it's just going to show up as Mr. Glad. So, um, to define this in my entire dictionary, I'm going to highlight it and then go to ddefine. Okay, and type in equal. And there you go. Okay, so now if I type this short form in any future job, it's going to come out as equal without me having to define it again. Okay, so the last one I'll show you is this one, which I want to dedefine as abrasion. Um, so this is, so PW is B, then R, then this is long A, and then the GS is a shun ending. So abrasion, I want that to be abrasion. Um, which I'm also kind of surprised that isn't already in my dictionary, but... Um, I guess maybe abrasion doesn't come up that often. So anyway, abrasion, and I'm going to click OK. And voila! All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. If you have any questions or something I didn't explain very clearly, please let me know, and I will do my best to answer it. And I will see you in the next one.